Aslahel Sitsayotsa Sitsa Twelchaf Dothlelep. Good afternoon, dear relatives. My traditional name is Sitsayotsa. I'm a member of the Tulalip tribes from the state of Washington. I serve as the National Native American Boarding School Healing Coalition Chief Executive as a Chief Executive Officer. It is an honor to stand with Secretary Deb Holland, Assistant Secretary Brian Newland, and boarding school survivor Jim LaBelle Sr. to commemorate the release of the historical work of this Department of Interior and the National Native American Boarding School Healing Coalition on Indian Boarding Schools. This is a historic moment at, as it reaffirms the stories we all grew up with, the truth of our people, and the often immense torture our elders and ancestors went through as children at the hands of the federal government and the religious institutions. The impacts of boarding schools are still with us today. Our children had names. Our children had families. Our children had their own languages. Our children had their own regalia, prayers, and religion before Indian boarding schools violently took them away. The United States operated, wielded assimilative education programs from the early 1800s to 1969. Nearly 200 years of forced labor, displacing native peoples from their usual and accustomed territories. Removal of their spirit, taking away their traditional foods and making them pay with their lives as native children. After generations, we still do not know how many children attended, how many children died, and or how many children were permanently scarred for life because of these federal institutions. But we are grateful to stand today with an administration who is willing to find out the truth and help us put names to the unmarked graves that cover at least 37 states. This report is foundation, a foundational step in what we know will open the doors for deeper engagement and more robust opportunities for truth seeking. Our, our recent collaborative work with the US Department of the Interior has identified 408 federally funded and supported US Indian boarding schools, as well as 89 additional boarding schools that received no federal funding at all. Over two centuries, these 497 boarding schools operated as a broad system with a singular goal aimed at our children to strip us of our languages, identities, and cultures. These lifeways that have connected us to the land since time immemorial. We must investigate beyond the Department of Interior Federal Indian Boarding School Initiative and compile all previous research and bring together partners for a comprehensive review of federal boarding school policies and their impacts. We must expand upon the great work of the Department of Interior Initiative to know the magnitude of loss of human life. This is why we need H.R. 5444 and Senate Bill 2907, the Truth and Healing Commission on Indian Boarding School Policies Act. We must be able to locate church and government records beyond the Department of Interior's reach. The commission would locate and analyze all records on Indian boarding schools. The commission would have the power to issue subpoenas to produce records that are targeted 
to attendants, infirmary, deaths, land, and other correspondence related to boarding schools. We must provide survivors the opportunity to testify and to tell their story as a child of boarding schools and document ongoing impacts from boarding schools. We must understand the full history. The full history of intergenerational trauma and how it relates to natives with regards to current impacts on physical health, mental health, spiritual health, and the health of our community. Our children deserve to be found. Our children deserve to be brought home. We are here for their justice and we will not stop advocating until the United States fully accounts for the genocide committed against Native children. The time is now. Tiguitzid, Haichka, Bisha, Miigwech. Thanking you in our languages and praying that our languages come back with with as much love and strength as our ancestors spoke them. Thank you. At this time, I have the great honor of introducing you to James Zilbell Sr., the first vice president of the National Native American Boarding School Healing Coalition and also a boarding school survivor. Very important story that we need to hear. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you Deborah ha Holland, secretary, uh, my fellow elders. Thank you. It's, um, I was born in an era when Alaska was still a territory and um, the federal government had total sway over the entire uh, territory at the time, including its 229 villages, uh, which later became known as tribes. And I want you to know that um, Alaska Native people experienced a very similar um, kinds of acculturation and assimilation that occurred in the lower 48 states uh, with, the, with the Western expansion. And this came through uh, a guy by the name of Sheldon Jackson, a, a, uh, a Presbyterian minister in the 1880s, uh, who was a very fine admirer of uh, Colonel Henry Pratt. And uh, so consequently, a lot of the BIA schools in Alaska are modeled after the one in Carlisle. In fact, uh, many children, many early children that went to boarding school uh, in Carlisle came from Alaska. And uh, some of them are still there and we wanna take, bring them home. Um, <clears throat> I'm a product of uh, 10 years of boarding school myself, uh, going in at the age of uh, eight years old, my, my brother was six, and uh, I went to two BIA boarding schools, uh, Wrangell Institute and uh, Mount Edgecombe High School. And uh, I learned everything about the European American culture, its history, language, civilizations, math, science, but I didn't know anything about who I was as a native person. I came out not knowing who I was. And I will share that more in detail uh, tomorrow. But what I wanna say, um, the, the echoes of the boarding school era, even though it's, it ceased or stopped in many places, the vestiges of it is still continuing on today. 
especially with our high incarceration, incarceration rates of Native people across America. Uh, in Alaska, we have maybe 18% of uh, the state's population, but we are 40% in the criminal justice system. Likewise, 60% uh, of our children that are in foster care in Alaska are Alaska Native children, and 60%. And these are just but some examples of some of the uh, uh, visual things of historical trauma in boarding school. We also have the highest suicide rates in America, uh, murders and suicides and domestic violence. And uh, we're still having to deal with those things today. I'm, I'm very grateful to have this opportunity to uh, to speak to you and to hopefully tomorrow you'll also hear more of our stories. Thank you.